Hello and welcome to another edition of Paul.com TV. Um, in this particular video section, we're going to be talking about a really cool tool called SQL Map. It's a SQL injection tool, an automated SQL injection tool. And playing around with this tool for the past couple of hours, I've kind of come to the conclusion that this tool is better than a lot of the commercial tools that are available. And one of the reasons why I think it's better than a lot of the commercial tools is quite simply because of its flexibility. So let's get you guys familiar with the tool itself. The first place you guys should start whenever you get running with this tool is the actual SourceForge page for it. It has a great, great description of the different types of techniques that it can do from a SQL injection perspective and the backend databases that it supports for actually querying and talking to. I, I think this is important mainly because a lot of penetration testers may be really familiar with MySQL, they may be really familiar with Oracle, but this allows them to actually work more comfortably in additional databases that uh, they normally wouldn't be swimming in, something they may be a little bit more uh, uncomfortable with. Um, also has a variety of different takeover features. We're going to be talking about that here in just a little bit. Um, great usage, great help page, great configuration options. So let's jump straight into this tool. As I said, we're going to be working with SQL Map this evening. Um, the first thing that I would like you guys to do after you guys get it extracted is take a look at all the different documentation that's with it, of course, but the sqlmap.conf is interesting. If I were to less that out, dot .conf, it gives you all kinds of interesting usage. Now, aside from reading the man pages, of course, aside from going to the website, this particular com uh, comfort, uh, <laughs> configuration file is extremely, extremely good for getting started with the tool. For example, you can actually do Google dork options, which I'll actually be working with here in just a couple of seconds. It's actually my favorite settings. Variety of different request settings. As I said there in earlier videos, there are differences in GET, which is actual speci actually specified in the URL for a website or post, which is some of the options that can actually be specified in the website itself. Um, specifying for different different ways to handle cookies, how to handle different headers. It also has the capability for authentication. Now, I really, really like this because any penetration test you do, that you do, especially when you're working with web-based penetration tests, should be broken up into pre-auth and post-authentication testing. Why? Well, yeah, everybody wants to force the penetration tester into a box where they're going to be testing for vulnerabilities, quote-unquote, like a hacker would, without an account coming in, and really, that's complete hokum. A lot of times, whenever attackers are breaking into websites, they may already have an account, and they may be, le may be leveraging an existing account to enumerate additional data that they shouldn't have access to. So always be trying to do uh, pre- and post-authentication tests whenever you're doing your, uh, your testing. But play around with the configuration file, because there's a lot of really, really cool things there. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to run this against today is I just uh, absolutely love the folks at Acunetics because they give us all kinds of wonderful web applications to actually try to go after. So let me zoom in here so you guys can see what's going on. And as you can see, it's a Python script, sqlmap.py. Now, the co going through the commands that I'm going to be using today, there are a lot of commands that you can work with using this tool. I'm going to be running dump all. Now, dash dash dump dash all basically tries to do as much enumeration of the backend database as it possibly can. Dash G allows us to do some Google dork search directives to try to give us a wider palette of, uh, of IP addresses, not IP addresses, but pages to actually test against the remote website. This is important because, as I was mentioning earlier, one of the cool features of SQL Map is that it has tremendous flexibility. For example, you can use SQL Map using the output or the logs from tools like WebScarab or Burp. So you can basically crawl the website and then use that as an import for SQL Map. You can also specify one-shot URLs with the dash U command, so it'll go after that specific URL. It's a nice way to use it like a scalpel, but today I'm going to be using it like a shotgun. So what's going to happen is it's going to basically do a Google search. It's going to look for test.php.acu .com, and it's going to pull back any page with an extension PHP, and it's going to ask me, do I actually want to test it? First up, it says, do you want to test this URL? Well, that's what we're here for. Yes, I'd like to test this URL. It's going to check if it's stable, and then it's going to move on. In this situation, it didn't find very much interesting, said warning get parameter pick is not dynamic. 
Okay. So we keep going, keep hitting yes, until it comes up and it says, do you want to test this parameter? And it's, as you can see now at the bottom, it says input. Do you want to exploit the SQL injection? Why, yes. Yet again, that is why we're here. So what it's going to do is it's going to try and confirm the back end of the database. So it's testing for MySQL, confirming that it's MySQL, and then it's going to try and fetch tables and names. Now, it may pull stuff back really, really quick, or it may not, all depending on the type of SQL injection that it's actually doing. But I'd really like to call your attention to the stuff at the middle of the screen right now. You can see that it said the backend database is, in fact, MySQL. The web server that it's running on is Linux. It's Ubuntu, Edgy Ift, or Dapper Drake. Very cool. And the web application technology was Apache in the version of PHP. Then it found the backend database is greater than or equal to 5.0.0. Now, at this point, you can see we did a query, select distinct in full class schema name AS character of 1,000, excuse me, 10,000, character 32 from information schema, uh, schema limit 0, comma 1. And as you can see, it's starting to pull the data back. So we've got information, underscore, so it's slowly bringing that data back to us. Why do I like this so much? Why do I like this so much? Well, the reason why I like this is a lot of times whenever people are doing web penetration tests today, they do web penetration tests and they fall into two traps with SQL injection. Either A, they fall into the trap where the tool tells them their SQL injection and they simply go with it. They just accept it at blind faith. That's somewhat pro problematic. Okay? B, the other problem that they run into is their capability of actually pulling data out of a SQL database using SQL injection techniques is somewhat limited. And there's really nothing wrong with this. There's a lot of people that are outstanding at doing these types of attacks. But a lot of times we have to use a variety of different encodings, like uh, rsnakes, website, hackers.org, and try to do all those manual may be very, very time intensive. And this helps take a lot of that weight off the shoulders of the pen test. So we got all kinds of information that we're pulling from here. We got AccuCart. Um, we're actually pulling off uh, whatever it says, care A character, possibly. Um, so it's pulling the information back one at a time. So this actually works for the quote unquote proof that we got access to this database. Now, at this point, a lot of people say, well, PHP is cool. There's been a lot of tools that do PHP. Well, sure enough, this tool also has the capability of doing ASP, or Microsoft uh, Pages. And I already pre-greased the wheels a little bit on this, doing the Google Dorks thing yet again, doing test ASP.acunetics.com. And it came back and it found a field that it believes is injectable. I'm going to hit yes, and it's going to go through and it's going to try to inject it. In fact, I just got a wonderful little error against it. That's not that big of a deal. Tools crash all the time. Anytime they do, be sure to log your results, log it in your book, and then move on. So yes, this does have the capability of actually going off Microsoft SQL uh, backends as well as part of ASP. Now that's pretty neat. Now one of the command options that I didn't use, for whatever reason it's not working on the Acunetics website, is the dash dash SQL dash shell. Now dash dash SQL dash shell will actually give you a SQL shell on that system and it will basically interpret anything that you type in and then format it in the way that the website's expecting it, and then pull that data back. So that is another very, very cool feature of this tool that you can actually interact with your results, which is probably one of the ultimate things that a pen tester can work with whenever they actually are pulling back results from a website. They can actually get that shell and pull that data back for that PII information or those credit card information, which is very, very good stuff. So there's a couple of things I'd like you to play with. Please read the man pages. Please read the help. Go through the configuration files. What I talked about today is just the surface of what you can do with this tool. So if you guys have any other questions, please don't hesitate to e email the cool crew at paul.com. Also, the guys at SQL Map are very, very nice gentlemen, and I'm sure that they'd be willing to help you. And as we close things out on this particular video, you can see that we're pulling all kinds of interesting table names from the database. And it's moving relatively slow, but this is absolutely awesome for a penetration test. SQL Map should be a tool in your arsenal. Thank you very much for your time, as I always say. Um, this is John Strand from paul.com. Please be sure to check out, our, check out our podcast every Thursday night, 7 to 9 Eastern Time. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us. Take care and have a great day.